All right, so good morning. This is week four of the Foundations class. So thank you guys so much for being here. It looks like you got a good group. You can hop over on the chat and say good morning. Hi, Lindsay. Um, and thank you guys so much for being here. This is probably, the, I think this is the biggest group we've had so far for, um, for this particular class. So I'm excited. Thank you for those of you that are here, able to be here today, maybe for the first time. It's so nice to have people on live. Danielle and I spent the first class just talking to each other, so. <laughs> Look, we've like quadrupled. It's amazing. Um, so today's class is about building belief, which, you know, we spent some time the first two weeks and then last week was kind of like a, a making sure I said everything that I wanted to say and sort of emphasizing what we talked about in the first two weeks of, you know, setting goals that, that stir your heart and then understanding a compensation plan as a strategy for achieving those goals. Um, but really nothing can happen in this business unless you believe. And, um, you know, one of direct selling is a personal growth business. You know, you might think you're in the business of, of you know, empowering women out of poverty and selling beautiful jewelry bags, home decor and, and scarves. Um, but you're not, you're in the personal growth business because you can't do that job. You can't go out and do parties and sponsor people and, and, you know, tell stories even, and, and be a great compassionate entrepreneur, unless you have belief in yourself that you can actually do that. Does that make sense? Like you can't put the cart before the horse. And, um, and it's a, it's a journey. I mean, it truly is something that is a constant, uh, development, even like I was saying to the master class, like you have to do it on purpose. You have to grow on purpose. You have to learn about yourself on purpose, reflect on the things that you're doing constantly be, you know, gut checking and, and saying to yourself, like, where am I today and, and you know, and am I ready to, to go out and represent the artisans and do my best work as a compassionate entrepreneur? And it really comes down to, to belief. You know, once your, your goal is to have discipline, determination, and drive be the core qualities and strengths that you possess. And I will tell you that almost daily there are things there are demons there there is self-talk that that's going to come into play that are going to force you to uh or, or make you feel like you're you're losing your grip on on those three areas discipline determination and drive there's always going to be something uh trying to to hold you back from that but if we believe that people who are successful succeed on purpose and that hope isn't the business plan, we can be intentional about uh, our belief systems and the way that we believe. And, and we can fight those things and we can, we can hold up discipline, determination, and drive as our core strengths and, and you know, work those out, so to speak, um, through every day as we, as we do our business. Um, I talked about um, in the second week when I was talking about the compensation plan that when you choose a direct sales business, you're really choosing one based on the plan, the product, and the people. Um, so, oh, hold on. My contractor's here. Hold on. Good morning. Sorry, I didn't hear you now. Um, and so something that I think is really, really important when you have made that choice is that you don't put conditions on your commitment. So you've chosen Trades of Hope to be a part of. You've chosen Trades of Hope. Probably it started with the people and the products. You probably love the mission and you love the products. And then a couple weeks ago, maybe for the very first time, you learned about the plan, which is the compensation plan. But now you've got a pretty solid grip on all three of those things. And you've committed to being a compassionate entrepreneur, but there can't be, um, there can't be conditional commitments. So tell me if you hear yourself in any of these statements. I'll give it my best shot. Did you say that when you joined? Have you heard somebody on your team that you've sponsored say that? I'll do it if I can find the right people, the right hostesses. I'll, you know, if I can, I'll sponsor if I can find somebody, you know, who's a good fit. I'll do it if the economy gets better, or, or even I hear this a lot that um, I, I, I live in an area that, that doesn't really, you know, no, nobody around me has, has a lot of money or our area is struggling economically. Um, 
or I'll do it when the company changes, I'll do it when the company grows, um, you know, that kind of thing. So I think that these are all conditional commitments. I'll try, I'll give it my best shot. I'll do it if I can find the right people. I'm not sure, I'll, you know, I'll give it a go. And you might have started it that way. You might have started your business that way. So I'm not beating you up. I kind of started it that way too. I joined Trades of Hope. Um, I got my, my kit for free. So I was like, well, what have I got to lose? I'll give it a shot. So I absolutely started from a place of conditional commitment. Um, so I'm not, I'm certainly not judging that. I think a lot of people start from that because it's a, it's a protective thing too. You're kind of saying like, you know, I'm just sort of seeing if this works because if it doesn't, I don't want to feel like a failure or I don't want to, you know, I had had a, a direct sales experience that had failed. So I certainly didn't want to have another one under my belt. So I was kind of like, well, how bad could it be? I got my kid for free, whatever, you know, nothing to lose. Um, but I think that what the, what, where there's a problem there is if that commitment to your business remains conditional. And that's where uh, I think a lot of new CEs start and they never get beyond that. So even as a leader, you can be listening for those kind of clues like, ooh, she's saying like she'll just, she'll just see or she'll give it her best shot. You know, not that you want to call somebody out on that, but you can, you can see that early on and recognize that as a leader and kind of help somebody, um, you know, believe through that and actually believe that they don't have to be conditionally committed, that they can actually do it and you can help them do that. Um, so here's a quote for you. Um, our power comes from within. You can refuse to let forces outside your control determine your destiny. You can actually refuse to do that. You can refuse to be swayed. You can refuse to give up on your dreams, no matter what is happening in the world or in, in your world. While most people wait for something to happen, you can make something happen. While others wait for things to get better, you can make yourself better. You'll make mistakes. And if you don't, it's because you're not trying hard enough. You'll face challenges. And if you don't, it's because you're playing in the sandbox. Growing a business takes determination, discipline, and drive. So that's a little bit of tough love from Mary Christensen. I love, I love her, though, because she's absolutely right. Um, and that's really the difference between somebody who's just dabbling, just has a conditional commitment, and somebody who develops into a leader and grows a real business. Um, and that's whatever direct sales company that you choose. And you've chosen Trades of Hope, thankfully. Um, but you've got to, you've got to know that you're going to face those challenges, but that you can actually choose to do something about it. You've got to believe that you want it, that you deserve it, that you can do it, and that you will do it. Whatever your dream is, whatever that goal is that you said in that first week's call, um, and some of you have done some great reflection and trying to figure out what that is, and you've even reflected on the fact that you have a hard time saying what you want, but you've got to, you've got to be able to say, I want this, I deserve this, I can do it, and I will do it. And when you take that goal of whatever it is and you put those statements onto it, that should fill you with you know, probably a mixture of excitement and thrill, maybe a little bit of fear and apprehension, but all of it mixed together is amazing. And, and you've got to also be able to say to yourself, if it's not working for me, it's not because I'm, or it's either because I'm not doing enough or I'm doing the wrong things. You have to be okay saying that to yourself. So if you're saying, but I've tried everything, or you're even hearing uh, somebody on your team say, but I've tried everything. Well, have you really? Have you really called 50 people? Have you really, you know, have you really sat down and made those phone calls? Have you really, or are you spinning your wheels doing the wrong things? Are you posting too much on social media? And you're like, but I've posted everywhere and I'm not, and nobody's responding. Well, no kidding. Nobody responds to Facebook posts. But if you put up a Facebook post and then you make 50 phone calls, then we can talk. Maybe the thing that you're saying in the phone call is wrong or, you know, or coming off uh, in a way that you didn't, you didn't intend. Um, but usually if something's not going the way that you want, it's because you're not doing enough or you're doing the wrong things. And that's true for you and it's true for your team. And as a leader, you can help people through that. Um, I will keep working and I will keep learning until I achieve my goal. Um, there's a, just like there's a, a danger in conditional commitments, there is a freedom in a non-negotiable goal. 
uh, somebody said in the in the in the page that they were afraid of making goals or they held back making goals because they didn't know if they could actually achieve them. But if your goal is something that's kind of non-negotiable and you allow it to be um, set in concrete and let the timeline of it be set in sand, then there's a lot of, of freedom in that, that you just keep working until you achieve it. And there's no, uh, if you, Mary Christensen says, I cannot fail if I do not quit before I succeed. So you just keep working until you achieve that goal and you allow it to be, you don't worry as much about the distance as you worry, or you don't worry about anything, but don't worry about the distance. Make sure you've got your direction right. And that's what I just said in the master class that you can control the direction you're going. Don't worry about the distance or the amount of time that it takes or, you know, that deadline that you've set for yourself. You cannot fail if you don't quit before you succeed. So you, these are, these are some big statements that I'm throwing at you. There's going to be a lot for you to chew on, but it's really important that, that you dig into this level of belief. Um, now let's talk for a minute about self-sabotage because this is probably one of the most dangerous things. Um, hold on. Um, that happens to all compassionate entrepreneurs. It just happens to women in general. Um, you know, we tend to um, we tend to overestimate the challenge and underestimate ourselves. Like we think something's going to be super super hard, or we look at something and say, eh, "I don't I don't know if I can tackle that because I don't think I can tackle that because either the pro the thing is so big or I don't have what it takes to do it." But I will tell you that everything you need to succeed is already inside you. You have your own natural strengths and abilities and the ability to strengthen those natural strengths and abilities. You can also eliminate the self-defeating beliefs and the demons inside of you. Um, you are already enough and you just have to own that and run with it. Um, and sometimes I think about not, not even just running with it, but like running over it. Like, like running over your doubts and, and disbeliefs, like, like they're just bumps in the road. Like just go right over them. Um, I also like the image of the border patrol. We've talked about, I've talked about this before in other trainings that, you know, every time you start to step out of your comfort zone, you know, you get those little voices that are like, they're like a, like if you imagine your, your safety area, your safe area is like inside this wall, right? And you've got this border patrol, like these little, these little guys with, you know, Nerf guns, like standing along the edge of the wall. And every time you step out, they start shooting you with those Nerf guns and you're like, ah, like, ah, okay, 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 fine. It's annoying. I'm coming back inside. But the border patrol is actually, if you think about it in, in, instead of them trying to keep you inside those walls, maybe they're trying to force you out. Like, like they're the, they're the sign that you're actually going in the right direction. So sometimes I think about the border patrol now as like my kids shooting Nerf guns at me. Like how annoying is that? But like, if I go far enough away, the guns can't reach me anymore. Like those little darts that are, end up all over my house and I have them in the weirdest places, like on top of like, you know, ceiling fans and stuff because they just end up everywhere. But like, if I go far enough away, they can't get me anymore. And I'm in like the safe zone and I'm in this new area that, that like feels really good and I'm free and, and those, little, those little boogers can't shoot at me anymore. So think about the border patrol like that, like, like getting outside of that wall and that, those little darts shooting at you is actually a sign that you're going in the right direction. And, and you can almost like enjoy that process of like, ooh, I'm gonna escape. I'm gonna get out of, of that comfort zone because there's a whole other world out there of, of freedom and belief. Um, how many of you hear some of these statements in your head? I'm too new, like I don't know enough. I'm too old, <laughs> uh, I'm too young, I'm too busy. I'm too shy. I'm not confident enough. I'm not smart enough. Um, I don't want to seem like I'm taking advantage. I don't want to seem like I'm pushy. My kids are, are really little or my kids are really involved in sports. Um, my other job or my volunteer work is too demanding. Um, I just don't have the experience. I've got, I, I'm not a salesperson. I just don't have the time. Uh, I can't seem to find the time. I'm not educated enough. I'm overqualified, like I'm not doing this, or it's not what I want. Um, all of these thoughts, we've all had at least one or maybe all of them. 
at some point in our businesses. And a lot of women have them at the very, very beginning. And some of you are at the beginning of your journey, but no matter where you are, those are the thoughts that keep you trapped. Those are the self-sabotaging thoughts that when you hear them creep in, you've got to fight back against them. Because thinking that way just opens up this big door for failure feelings to breeze right in. You know, think about like when you start opening, you know, the weather's starting to cool off and you're opening your doors and, you know, uh, what kind of bugs are coming into your house? And if you live in Florida, it might even be a snake. Um, so if you're looking for excuses, you will find them everywhere, every time. If you go looking for them, if you need an excuse why you can't do this or why you can't succeed, you'll find it. I might have just given you one <laughs> if you were looking for it because they're everywhere. Um, but you cannot make money and build a successful business and make excuses at the same time. That's just, that's just true. Um, so you have to decide, you have to make it a non-negotiable to release those excuses. If you don't believe that you deserve to, to succeed, then you'll find a thousand reasons why you can't. Um, so don't overthink the challenge and don't underestimate yourself. Don't create the self-fulfilling prophecy of what could go wrong. Actually, um, create a self-fulfilling prophecy of what could go right. like grand central around here okay so so make a self-fulfilling prophecy of what could go right um there's a mark twain quote um i've been through some terrible times in my life some of which actually happened so you know you can kind of create your own thoughts and your own reality even with with your mind you know think about when you retell a story um you know there's there's I mean, they're like eyewitnesses for a crime. Like there's always going to be a million different perspectives. So you can actually shape the, the experiences that happen to you into positive or negative experiences. Um, but at the core, determination, discipline, and drive. Those are the three qualities that you're, that you're striving to have as your core strengths. And that's what sets apart doers from dreamers. You can't just be excited about what we're doing. You have to be actually willing to get in and do the work. Um, Okay, I'm going to stop there because that was a lot. And um, I've got two more, two and a half more pages of notes for, to, for, for this topic. So I want to dig in a little bit further um, next week. I'm feeling like it's, this is actually really good that I want to just kind of take some time. Um, so yeah, so for this week, I want you to think about that border patrol. I want you to think about the self-sabotaging that you may or may not do, the conditions that you put onto your business and yourself. A lot of kind of tough love today, but I feel like when you dig in and you do that work, you are so much more prepared to help others. And that's why I put that image last week of the putting on your oxygen mask first, because that's really what it's all about. You've got to take care of your own belief system, your own doubts and, and feelings um, before you can really be a leader and help and help others. And also knowing that it's a constant process, that we are in the personal growth business and that you, just by being on this call, are taking intentional steps towards growing. And that is awesome. So thank you very much for being on today. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful week. I'm going to stop the recording.